And our souls, just like our bodies, they can grow unhealthy. You can't ignore the soul for too long without it directly impacting your life. This one I struggle with all the time. That's the Holy, one of the Holy Spirit's roles in our life. The more we tell that voice to shut up, it will. The thought of that voice becoming quiet scares me. God didn't change on you. You changed. It was a weird season for me. Like, I just felt like I wasn't hearing from God. If you follow Jesus longer than several days, you're going to have this. We're going to be talking about spiritual unhealth. And what are the warning signs? And, and what should you do if you're starting to feel a little bit unhealthy or spiritually fatigued? So, Jason and Joanna, uh, today we're talking about this theme of spiritual unhealth. And I think this is something we don't talk about a whole lot. We it's don't. A fun topic. <laughs> fun topic. <laughs> Unhealth. The well, it's everything out there is about physical health. Yeah. Like everything is about physical health and what you eat and what you you know do to to your body and like you know working out and stuff. But we don't talk about the fact that our souls, just like our bodies, they they can grow unhealthy, and we should pay attention to that. I think first thing uh, that we're going to look at is moral confusion. So with moral confusion, this is like when you start to the the you start to blur the lines. This is when you're blurring the lines of like what's right and wrong. Things that you know you wouldn't have done before, all of a sudden like become justifying. a little bit. Yeah, it's like that's fine. It's just a little, just a, it's just one know. time. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is a sign that you may be unhealthy right now. You ought to pay attention. Yeah. This one's this is a good one. This one is. This one I struggle with all the time, and I just know, like I know that you know that you know that you know where it's like, well, I'm, I'm past that. I can, I can watch that. I'm past that. I can, you know, I can do that, and it's so subtle, and you start making these tiny little justifications for uh, whatever, and sometimes you're just tired Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I've been, I've been fighting that thing off for 20 something years. And it's like, you know, uh, so you're just tired too. But I think that's an interesting one to now, but are you saying moral confusion as you don't know right and wrong or moral confusion as in you begin to justify small ways of both? I think moral confusion is when, when your moral decisions that were once as black and white, all of a sudden get very foggy. Mm-hmm. I think when we're close to Christ, when we're close to, when we're the, the vine of the branches, when we're connected to the vine, mm -hmm. everything is pretty clear. It's like, and there's a fervor of almost being like, no, I can't do that, or yeah. I don't want to do that, or that's, but when we're unhealthy and we become further from Christ, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like, meh, mm -hmm. meh. So here's a way I'd say it then as a, as a litmus or a diagnostic, if the things that once you felt strong conviction around, you no longer find convicting. You should pay attention to that. Something moved. And my guess is it wasn't God. Mm -hmm. so, so that might be a diagnostic, like the things that you were hyper attuned to early on, like, oh, man, I don't want any part of that, that you've made slow. It's, a, it's well, at least it's not that. When yeah. you start to compare what you're doing to the worst as opposed to, to holiness and to God's, you know what I mean? Like you're not comparing there anymore. You're comparing to what it could be. That's a sign. So, I mean, like, I think that could be helpful to just go, man, are there things that I used to be feel conviction around in a godly sense, not mm -hmm. shame, but like what Jesus says in, 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 in John 16, the Holy spirit will come in and will convict you according to sin and righteousness and judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign of health. Mm -hmm. And that's a, because any good coach, if you're doing things that aren't healthy for your, are, is going to get in your face and say, you got to cut the candy bars out. Like you literally, that's all you eat all day. So yeah, you're not making, like they're going to tell you that. All they're right, not, Jason, they're not a good coach <laughs> 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 if they don't. That's the Holy, one of the Holy Spirit's roles in our life. Well, like any gentleman, the more we tell that voice to shut up, eventually we, we, he will. And, and the more we tell that voice to shut up, the less we'll be able to recognize it. It becomes a gentle whisper at some point, and it's like, can't hear it anymore. That's a sign. If that mm -hmm. doesn't scare you, I don't, I, that scares me. The thought of that voice becoming quiet scares me. 
Yeah, I mean, it does me too. And that, and you know, scare is a word we don't like to use be, with God, but I think I think it, it be, I think it's a healthy kind of in all kind of mm-hmm. reverent fear in a sense. Um, it, it should wake us up. Mm-hmm. That should wake us up. Yeah. Well, and you said a moment ago, and I thought it was great. God didn't change on you, mm-hmm. like you change. So next thing is is this idea of of just apathy. So I, I think spiritual apathy is, is something where it's like, this is, spiritual apathy is, I, I don't want to. Mm. Yeah. This is when I don't want to be right. I don't want to be healthy. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Man, I was just reading a book um, uh, it's by Sam Chan. It's called Leadership Pain. And he, he's got this one chapter in there where he talks about, he, he was talking about people in ministry, in full-time ministry in particular, but he said, man, it's so, but this is true for any follower of Jesus, I believe. But he, speaking of ministry, he was like, man, it's so easy to be a full-time pastor and a part-time Christian. And you just lose. You just get apathetic. Mm-hmm. Like, you just do it all for whatever. Yeah. And it's so easy. I would say that's the case for any followers of Jesus. You know, again, it's kind of the show thing. Yeah. You know? I think it also can show up when things that used to break your heart don't anymore. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you um, have an example? I just, I know just even throughout the years, like a common prayer I've had is just like, hey, Jesus, like, help me see what breaks your heart yeah. and like break mine. Um, and so when things that I just know about myself personally, that it's when they stop doing that, it's like, oh, am I checked out? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Do I need, why am I not leaning into that? Like that? Yeah. You know. I For, for me, it's, it's, it's no different than exercise, okay? So when I'm healthy and I'm exercising and I'm watching my weight and stuff like that, it propels me to want to keep doing it. The more healthy I am, the more I want to do it. So, like, I, I don't mind taking a bike ride. I don't mind taking a long walk and stuff because I'm feeling healthy. But when I'm unhealthy, that's when I'm like, I don't want to. And, and I think we can do that with our time with God, our spiritual time, our, like our, our devotional time, going to church, when it's like, I don't want to watch. Like, first, it's like, I don't want to go. And then it's like, then I don't want to watch. And mm-hmm. then I don't want to read my Bible. That's that apathy of, like, I don't want to. I think that's, for me, what I think of when I think of spiritual apathy is when when I don't want to be healthy or I don't want to do the things that I know will make me spiritually healthy. And, and, and we all, if you follow Jesus longer than several days, you're going to, you know I mean, mm-hmm. you're going to have this. So, again, we're just saying all these things are just indicator like you should probably pay attention to. And I agree. There's, there's definitely moments where it's like, I don't, I, this happens to me all the time where I'm just like, I don't feel like it. And it, all we're saying is, then you should just pay attention to that. That might be your temperature, temperature's off, you know, or your blood pressure's off, you know, physically. Yeah. Um, so. And some well, of that I think is then the muscle of spiritual disciplines. Yeah. And so again, knowing that it's a spectrum, again, just like physical health, like muscles built over time. Yeah. And so I think it's also just important to remember, again, you don't just arrive at this place and you're magically muscular forever with no more work that needs to be put in. And so I think even with that apathy, that's a space where you might find yourself moving in and out of. And so it's normal, but again, don't stay there. Like what then when you have those moments of like, I don't want to, what's the discipline work to actually put in and do it anyway, that then over time the muscle is built. Well, or here's another way of thinking about it. This one is an interesting one because I think you're right. You got to keep creating the space for God to show up. But I would also say, what is it that moves, that gets you feeling something and do more of that overload mm-hmm. in that, yeah. in that season. And for me, it's, it's usually worship music for me. And it's usually stories. Those two things tend to engage my heart the most. Mm-hmm. So, that might be when I get into the seasons of spiritual apathy, that might be a season for me to do less of certain things and more of listening to worship and going online and hearing stories of life change and, um, or reading prayer requests from our church or whatever, you know, like, so it's okay to go, what is it that engage in any relationship? If you're married, there's so many more days. It's like, you don't feel a lot of stuff, but, but then you got to also make some room for like the, the feeling stuff too, you know, whether that's a, a weekend away or 
a, a, a night you're just having fun together, whatever. So, I mean, like, you've got to also create some space for that. But it's okay to, instead of just trudging through and be like, well, i got to go read my Bible again. Well, okay. But you should do the things. It's okay to do the things mm-hmm. that kind of move your heart totally. and make you feel. Yep. And it's okay to ask God for that, too, and to say, God, please, please make my heart So I want to feel those things. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad thing. But I don't think you're saying... Well, I don't feel like going to church, so don't. I'm not saying that, definitely. I'm saying, because you got to keep showing up in the space. Again, that's to Joanna's point. you got to keep creating the space for it to happen. It's just mm-hmm. like, now again, let's go back, physical exercise. i got to keep doing the thing. But there may be some, like I can do all the physical exercise in the world, but I just love running. Then you then run more in that mm-hmm. season. And it's like, because there's certain things, it's like, I got to go, I got to go bench, you know, and I got to go um, do flies, right? Um, whatever. So it's like, I just got to do those things. Right. And that's being like but chained I to the plan. Running. What's that? That's like the difference of like being chained to the plan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like even giving the space for like the spirit to move. I also think you got to be real careful on this one that remember your security in your relationship with Jesus isn't based on any of your feelings anyway. So right. just be careful about that too. Um, but, but we gotta be careful. We don't create such a stoic response. Like, well, it doesn't matter what you feel. God loves you. Just do the thing. You know, it's like, pull up your boots and just get to work. Mm-hmm. Well, like that sounds great. And I actually think that's true to a, to a degree, but any meaningful relationship we have, you kind of, you want, you, you know, your heart wants to be engaged in that too. I mean, yeah. I also want to know Jenny loves me, not just wakes up and does the duty, you know, like, get da, 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 da. So, so anyways, I, th- I think there's something to this one. Like, you should pay attention if you just don't want to anymore. But I just want to be helpful to people to go, it's okay in those moments. Find the things that make you feel mm-hmm. and do those. Yeah. yeah. You're saying don't ignore it, but no. at the same token, don't, don't think that, you know, you can't, you know, have some creativity in those times to connect with God in new ways. And, uh, but don't stop. The, the, the point is don't lean into the apathy. Lean into God. Yeah, yeah I mean, r- right before Easter, I mean, I was just, I wasn't feeling anything. And um, I just wasn't feeling anything related to, I mean, like there was no, it was a weird season for me. Like I just felt like I wasn't hearing from God. I felt like I wasn't, I was probably apathetic. I wasn't actually well, I kind of was wanting to hear from God, but there, it, there's some days it's like I wasn't even really wanting, wanting to. And it caught me. And, and so, I mean, I actually went and I was like, okay. Like it kind of woke me up. Something's wrong. Something's off. First of all, like I'm asking God for something and I'm not hearing anything. So that's off. And then I don't feel anything. So that's kind of off. It's like all these little warning lights, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I found myself uh, angry, having imaginary conversations with people in my head. So that's kind of off. There's your emotions, you know, that you're talking about. So, I mean, like the first place I started was, you know, God, is there sin that I'm holding on to? Honestly, I haven't asked you that in a long time. So there's a little bit of an indicator light as well. But is there anything David said in the Psalms, search me, search my heart, know my anxious thoughts? That's a very, I didn't want to pray that prayer because I kind of, it just sounds so stupid, right? Because you kind of know, I think there's gonna, he's going to reveal some things, which is your clue. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, there you go. But anyways, and, and then I literally, physically got on my knees multiple times. And I don't do that all the time. But that was more of a physical posture in that season to go, something's off here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to posture myself in a different kind of way because I need this reconnected right now. And if I need to confess something, because I do, because I think harboring sin doesn't mean you're not a son of God or a daughter of God anymore. But if my kid were lying to me, you don't think that's going to put strain on the, like, he's still my kid, but she's still my kid, but... You don't think that's going to affect the relationship? So that's the point of confession. And anyways, um, and there was a lot of breakthrough in that season, but some of it was I just had to go back and do the things that 
I need to listen to just more worship music right now. Mm-hmm. Less, I'm not reading the Bible quite as much in my time. I'm just going to listen to, and it started to re-engage my, my heart in a different kind of way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I would just say, like, thank you for normalizing that and making that sound normal. Mm-hmm. Because I also think depending on someone's background or upbringing or experience they've had with religion in the past, that's not normal mm-hmm. to, ma- to make it sound normal. And so again, like even in our relationship with Jesus, he didn't just ask us to arrive and be done and like building relationship. And so like any other relationship, it ebbs and flows and like God knows that and makes it okay. And he isn't the thing that changes. Um, And so anyway, I would just say thank you for normalizing that because I think a lot of people need to be reminded that it's, there's not a finish line to this. Mm -mm. It's a relationship. And that's okay. It's a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what I didn't hear you say is, but for six months before that moment, you had ignored your spiritual health. Like, my point is, don't view that as like, you know, y- there wasn't an indicator that, you know, you had ignored in your story. You hadn't ignored your spiritual health for six months, got there, and we're like, I don't know what happened. Right. We're not saying that either. Yeah. Like, because I do think that there, you have to do the work. Yes. You, you have to put in the spiritual reps. You have to put in, because if I just leave it up to what my desires are. Yes. Like, that's not, that, we don't want to put our, put our spiritual journey and our spiritual disciplines based on our spiritual desire or our desires for the moment. Mm-hmm. Because my desires for the moment are very human. Yeah. yeah. Jesus tells a parable about two sons at one point, and he said, look. These two sons were both given instructions, do this. And if your dad tells you to do it, you need to obey, right? And one son's like, I'll do it, dad. I can't wait. Golly, you're the best. (laughs) You know, and guess what? He doesn't do it. The other son's like, are you, you know, you kidding me? I'm not doing that. And then a little bit of time goes by and he goes and does it. And Jesus says, which one is righteous? And it's the one who didn't want to. His attitude was horrible, but he, uh, he faithfully obeyed. And I think that's a little bit what you're getting at, Chad. It's like, no, there's, there's times in relationship because he's the king and I'm not. And he's the, he is my heavenly father who's get, like, no, he appointed me and chose. And so I don't want to be too bad. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm going to submit and surrender and obey. But he's so beautiful in the sense that, like, but he underneath that, there's also the prodigal son story, and there's mm-hmm. also the, you are my dearly loved son, um, in whom I'm well pleased, and you know there's all that too, and you want that living side by side. Yeah, and I would also just say to anyone listening who is back for the first time in a long time in their relationship with Jesus, there's also not too much time that has passed that you can't find yourself back in relationship mm-hmm. with Him, and so like I even know there's parts of my story in just like years where like it wasn't a priority Mm -hmm. um and it wasn't it's like not too far gone right it's like you just then you you start you just start showing up um it's good and i think that that's good and it's good to be reminded of that yeah that's great um last joanna you hinted at this and i'd love to hear your voice on this is lack of compassion Mm. when things stop breaking your heart Mm -hmm. tell us about that Yeah, I just, I think that can be another warning sign. And I think it has a little bit of that, like, empathy. It has a little bit of that disconnected. But then I think it's also that lack of action or, like, that lack of um, doing something with it. And so whether that's with my kids and, like, as my patients short with them and not showing empathy to a three-year-old not wanting to go to bed, (laughs) um, or is it, you know, something in my community or something that I've seen around me that you just have a lack of compassion towards or uh, what's the right way to say it? Like that just where like that thing should be different or why does that thing keep happening or why do you keep doing that? Haven't you learned yet? And the, you're saying like you, 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 you your margin for grace is kind of yes, gone. That's you're a impatient. Great way. Yes, yeah, yeah. totally. Um, mm-hmm. That's definitely a sign. I actually love that these two are back to back because to me, this is love God and love others. Mm. And the first one, the spiritual apathy side is the love God part. Like if you, 
if it's all duty and you feel no genuine affection for the grace of God, like just sometimes it just overwhelms you. Like I'm in awe. Like what a gift God you've given. What a privilege. You should probably pay attention like, like, yeah. like to that, right? So that's the one we were talking about a moment ago. On the other side, this is love others. If I never feel a genuine, like if I go months and it's like, I'm not moved. I mean, I just heard some horrible things. And it's like, eh, all right, all right. And, that, and this one is, this one is, uh, this one is a huge one for me. This is usually the first indicator light for me. This, mm. this, this, this last one, the lack of compassion that I begin to know, oh, my heart's not real soft right now. Um, uh, you know, they talk about this all the time with compa- compassion fatigue and, you know, um, all that. I, I love this passage in First John. John said, um, in First John 3, 17, he said, if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? That's a pretty straightforward way, <laughs> way of talking about it. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, no, these are tied together. Mm-hmm. How can, you know, and so um, I've been there. I've definitely been there where I see opportunities and I completely ignore them. And all we're saying is, get it. That's nor- like, yeah, that's going to happen. Just that ought to be a warning sign. Yeah. That ought to be a warning sign that something might not be healthy. That's good. I also find it when I don't actually want to pray for my enemies. Uh, or, you know, yeah. like an enemy is such like a strong yeah, word, you. but you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Where yeah. it's also just like, oh man, God, show me who I should pray for. Like yeah. that's usually a moment where I need to be reminded of that. You know what it is for me when a coworker will come up to me or a friend or I'll get that text message and my eyes roll and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, you, ig- yes. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. oh, I could, hey, I could really use a phone call. I could really use a yeah. breakfast. And I'm like, oh. yeah. At that point. You they, should at least ask, why did I just respond that way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and when another human being has become a burden. And, and again, that's, it, it's because normally, I'm not saying that I take on all people with all these, like, problems. But it's, it's norm, these are normally people that I enjoy living life mm-hmm. with and walking beside and it normally brings me joy, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, they all I see is the time suck and the burden. Mm-hmm. That that's for me an indicator. Yeah, it's like oh, normally I like when I see that person coming up to me in the hall, but now all of a sudden I'm like, oh. mm-hmm. so. Lastly, what are the steps back to health, and how do you stay there? Yeah, for me, I just taking inventory. So we've, I know we mentioned that even a couple of times, but even asking the question like, ooh, why did I just react that way? Or, ooh, what's causing that thing? So for me, it's always take inventory. Um, and then usually I have to do either, well, I have to pray, whether I do in that moment or not, right? Talk to God. Yeah. Uh, and then usually how do I talk to someone I trust about it? That's good. I'm not wired to figure it out on my own. And so, yeah, somewhere between a relationship with God and relationship with others. Yeah, I would, I would, I would encourage you to start, and I, you know, I, I'd encourage you to start where I started a few weeks ago when I was uh, at a place that was a difficult season, which is, I, I think a great prayer to get in the habit of praying is search my heart and know my anxious thought. Like, basically, God, continually just asking God, God, show me, where am I not connected? So, so you learn the, the you learn the, the pattern of, of asking God, but also the pattern of self-awareness. You know, you mentioned, Joanna, just, I don't think you said being curious, but always just asking questions about why you're doing and feeling the things that you are. And most of the time we just ignore those. So to me, it, 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 the starting point is always bringing our lives before, before the Spirit of God and saying, um, I want to see myself like you see me. I want to I want to be connect. I want to be connected to the vine, Jesus, as you say that that's your desire for me. I want to bear good fruit. It's it just starts there of just stating your intentions to God and and saying, God, I don't want to be healthy. I want to bear good fruit. I don't want to be unhealthy. So when there are things, and God, I am going to drift into these things. That is a, it's you know we I hope mm-hmm. we're kind of normalizing it, saying yeah. that's going to happen, like any relationship. God, make me quick to see it. Mm-hmm. quick to repent um, and quick to get reconnected where I need reconnected. Um, 
So, I mean, that's where I would start. I, I think for me, it's, it's doing the opposite of what these things are. I think it's leaning into sometimes, you know, when, when you are, are feeling a lack of compassion, I think it's time to act compassionately and, and fight that urge to view people as a burden. And I think when you're disconnected from others, you might need people in your life right now. And I, I do think there's something to be said about when you, to lean into it, figure, figuring it out. Mm. Don't ignore it. I, I'd say the biggest thing for me is, is when I have these, these feelings, what I want to do is ignore them and keep going. But it's almost like, like if you have a heart condition and there's warning signs, the worst thing you can do is ignore it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like to, to, the, the point is, there's lots of ways to find, find healing and growth and spiritual health. But the worst thing in the world, the only thing you shouldn't do is ignore it. Yeah. The only thing you should do, you shouldn't do is, is just say it's all fine. Yeah, that's really good. I, I would go one level. I mean, there's one other level to this conversation that I think um, might not be for everybody, but I think some people should do this and will want to do this. And I'm, I'm going to use myself as an example. In that season I was describing a moment ago that uh, I was just feeling kind of dry. There was also a lot of other things happening in that moment, um, uh, relationally and, um, just, they were very heavy. And, um, so I was talking to someone and I was telling them, I don't want to get bitter about, about these, the thing that's happened. I don't want to get bitter towards these people and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, so I'm really trying to fight not being bitter. Mm. Right. And what, they challenged me with, as they said, well, the way you can go about that is two different ways. You just choose not to get bitter. You try to make your choice, yada, yada. The other is, what is it that they were tapping on that, that was really kind of, what was it the thing? It was the thing beneath the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And what it was it was tapping on was, um, it was a much deeper sort of sense of, I failed and all that. And that's what I was kind of believing in that moment and all that. So they were like, that's what you need to take before Jesus. It's not bitterness. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to get bitter, you need to take that thing that you need healed, that it, that it exposed kind of like, man, I feel like a failure. Let him speak into that Mm -hmm. because if he heals that, you won't get bitter because you're getting the thing healed. You're getting the thing beneath the thing. So again, that's next level a little bit, but, but, Usually, I, all I'm trying to say is whatever those the signs of unhealth might be, they're probably pointing. Just ask, and why is it that I feel this level of anger? Mm-hmm. Why is it that I feel like keep keep digging and let yeah. Jesus dig up the roots, so that the fruit, you know, uh, is good fruit. And that's work towards long term health. Yeah, not just temporary health yep. or like temporary feeling better. It is interesting too. I think the other thing that's really good to just talk to God about is to help him build you found help him. One of the things I think is good to talk to God about too, is just have him help you build foundation. Like what are places you need help building foundation in? Um, and it's interesting. So even so Matthew seven, I mean, it says anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock, right? So what parts God like don't aren't built on solid rock? Like, how can you help me do that? Yeah. So though the rain comes in torrents and floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When it rains and the floods come, the winds beat against the house and it will collapse with a mighty crash. And so I think, too, some of these spaces with spiritual health, um, again, because it's a process, there might be things that have happened to you or seasons that you've lived through that it knocks you off the spiritual health because of circumstances or things that you've dealt with. And so again, the thing beneath the thing is like, go heal that, like go build foundation in your worth, go build like that comes from God that then when the flood comes again, or, you know, the thing that like trips you up again comes, your foundation is, is thicker and, and more secure. And so I think that's even just something personally I've been working on lately is like, there's just this thing. And so I started seeing a counselor about it and it's like, Hey, like there's this thing that I just keep getting tripped up on. Can you help me understand why? And so she's helped me find the thing beneath the thing. Mm. 
And I'm also just realizing like, I don't have a lot of foundation or muscle built in this area. Mm -hmm. Um, and so anyway, like talk to God about that. Like he wants to help me build foundation in that. Um, and be reminded that like he is the one that can help and that yeah. I don't have to do it on my own. What I love about that is is when you see these signs of unhealth, don't <laughs> these are a gift. These are a gift. Mm-hmm. Your fever is a gift because your fever is telling you your body's trying to fight something. You know, your blood pressure, if I find out it's a gift to know that. Because now I can have so don't there's no shame in this. Don't carry this around as a shame consider it God's trying to get your attention because he loves you. Mm-hmm. He loves you so much. He wants to heal those things in you. He wants to He wants to have, restore a relationship and all that. So anyways, just keep that in mind. That's great. So as we close this episode, remember that, you know, your spiritual health is just as important as your physical health. So you can't ignore it. You got to pay attention. If you enjoyed this episode of the Live Change podcast, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave comments. And as always, now that your life changed by Christ, make sure you live that change out.